How to pick out a good trail camera. That's this episode of Death by Bungie. Now, there are a million different kinds of trail cameras on the market. There is no way that I can do a video about all the different brands, all the different models, and be able to tell you which one's better than the other or anything like that. This video is not like that. Instead, this video is just going to be about some of the characteristics I like in a trail camera, what I look for, and what I don't like about them, and that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. I'm standing right here just above the little mineral site that I did a video about a few weeks ago and just down below the ridge clover staging food plot that I put in over the last couple of years. There's another camera up there over the little scrape. You've seen some videos on our Facebook page about that. Anybody who has followed Death by Bungie here on the YouTube channel or on the Facebook page, you know for sure that I love my trail cameras. I love to incorporate them in my videos. I like to share them on our Facebook page. My family gets a great kick out of going through and seeing what's happening in the woods when we're not there and all that sort of thing. Trail cameras are fantastic. They are a great part of what we're doing here on Death by Bungie. And they're a big part of my life. I've been running trail cameras clear back to 2009. I got my first trail camera and actually got a bear on it. It was the first animal that we ever captured on a trail camera. Not only was it a bear, it was a cinnamon phase colored bear, which is just fantastic to see one of those here in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Every week we're excited to get those trail cameras, check them, bring the cards back. And I usually run about five different cameras all year long and I can tell you what I like and what I don't like about these various cameras. I'm gonna start with one of the cameras that I don't like across the board. This camera, and that's nothing against Cuddyback. People rave about Cuddyback, and the picture quality is pretty good, the image quality is great, but the reality is I have a lot of complaints about this camera, and I'm gonna share those with you now. I hate to be a negative kind of guy. Um, that's not the way I am, but I'm telling you, these things are really frustrated me. First of all, these are things that you're gonna to wanna to look for if you're gonna go buy a new trail camera. This one, you have to take the entire back off in order to change the batteries, okay? Gotta unscrew these, pull the back off. I very much prefer simplicity. When you're trying to run five different cameras, you're trying to be as quiet in the woods as possible, you don't want a real complicated camera to go out there and have to use. To take the back off, have to take the whole camera off the tree the whole bit, that's more than what you need. A lot of trail cameras that I have simply have a tray that pulls out of the bottom or you open up the front of the camera and you can replace the batteries right there. Secondly, to get the card out, you have to unscrew this little thing in the bottom and I can barely get it out with my fingers. My fingernails don't even actually fit in there to get it. Sometimes I've had to have Genevieve get the cards out because she has smaller fingers than I do. And other times she's had to have me unscrew these little screws to get the cards open, to get the flap open to get the card out because she's not strong enough to unscrew those. Again, something that's gonna be simple, easy to get in and out of there is the best in my opinion. This cutty back system is unnecessarily complicated in my opinion. All this gibberish on the front, there's a whole bunch of language here, symbols, all that kind of stuff. And then it took me two weeks to figure this out, but when you're all done and you set it and you walk away from it, you got the time set, you got a fresh card in it, fresh batteries, all that, that's not good enough. You have to arm it before you leave. And then it gives you a 30 second countdown before you leave the area. It took me two weeks to figure that out because it wasn't shooting any pictures, it wasn't taking any pictures for me. I just want an on and off switch. I don't want the rest of this stuff. And I don't want to have to go through a little tiny digital interface. I'd rather just have a switch. Do you want video or pictures? And just a switch. Do you want on or off? And just a switch. Do you want five second delay or 30 second delay or whatever? You know, like that kind of stuff. I just want little switches. I will say that the picture quality is good, but frankly, it's not good enough to make up for that inconvenience, in my opinion. It's not good enough to inspire me to spend more money next time to get a cutty back. Like I said, there are a million different cameras on the market. 
The ones I really like are the mold trees. Now I want to be clear here, I'm not in any way affiliated with any brand of anything. I use a Canon camera, an Excalibur crossbow, mold tree cameras are my favorite. I just like the mold tree cameras because they're pretty simple. I've got several different models, use them over the years, and they're just pretty simple. I mean, they're, they're flip some switches and you can you know set it up and walk away from it. I don't want to go back and read a manual about my new trail camera. I just want to put it in the woods and take a whole bunch of really neat pictures with good image quality. Battery wise, when it comes to these cameras, I encourage you to get only cameras that use double A batteries. The reason I say that is that they're going to be cheaper for you in the long run. Back in the day, I had a lot of cameras running C batteries, and I, one year I calculated I spent almost $1,000 on batteries in one year. Um, I run them all year long, and I was running about five cameras, maybe more, but those batteries, those C batteries don't last as long, and they tend to be a little bit more expensive. The AA battery cameras that I've used, they run eight AA batteries, eight batteries a piece. I just buy a brick of those batteries, keep that in a Ranger, keep rotating them out when they need them. And they seem to have really good battery life anymore, these various cameras do. They've got the lights down to a science now to where they can use the LEDs, get a really good image quality and all that. So they don't suck a lot of juice anymore and those batteries will last a long time. But I recommend that you get, stick with cameras that all run the same kind of batteries. That way you can keep one kind of battery in your ranger or keep one kind of battery in your backpack and when you change out the batteries you've got them you don't have to go fishing around for the same reason you're going to want to make sure that all the cameras you get i recommend you get them using the full size sd cards a two gigabyte card in my experience even if you're shooting video or pictures doesn't make any difference but even with video i don't run out of card space on a cheap two gigabyte card over a one or two week period if I come back every other week or so and check those cards, I still got plenty of space on the cards, captured lots of pictures, everybody's happy. You might want bigger cards if you're gonna go longer periods of time before you check your cameras, but as long as that's not the case, you really don't have to worry about that. A lot of people when talking about trail cameras, they talk about trigger speed and how important it is to have a really fast trigger. In other words, what they're referring to is when the animal comes in front of the camera, that it snaps a picture right away. It immediately senses the animal, immediately turns on the camera and immediately takes that picture. My first trail cameras that I got from Walmart back in 2009 were really, really slow. They did not have a really fast trigger speed. And because of that, we ended up with what we used to call butt shots, picture after picture after picture of a deer as it was passing by the camera, but most of the deer was out of the, out of the frame. You couldn't even see the whole deer. Trigger speed is a lot faster today. It's a lot better than it's ever been. But one of the things I wanna throw out there is you don't necessarily need fast trigger speed. Trigger speed is only going to be important if you're the trail camera and the deer's walking across this way. But if you put the trail camera in a spot, you plan it out ahead of time, you really don't need the fast trigger speed. For example, if I was pointing that camera up the trail or down the trail, you'll get pictures of deer coming and going and you'll have great pictures. I mean, it's not gonna be a problem. You're gonna get the whole deer and get a good sense of what's using that trail. That to me is a lot easier than trying to buy a camera that advertises a really fast trigger speed and in the end may not even be able to, to deliver that kind of a product. Another way to work around that is I set my trail cameras up. Instead of using them all along trails, a lot of them I have over mineral sites. Like this little camera right here, this mole tree, is set up right over this little mineral site. They don't get too uncomfortable with the camera and they seem to be pretty happy with it. Another way to get out of having a fast trigger speed is set the camera up over a food plot. Deer will sit in those food plots and browse and you'll get plenty of really nice pictures without a fast trigger speed. I wanna focus on image quality, not so much on trigger speed. Trigger speed might be one of those things that you can pay a lot for, but you might not get the return on investment. And in my opinion, picture quality to me is more important than the trigger speed. Another thing that's really important to me, more so than trigger speed, is low light quality. I would rather pay for low light quality pictures than trigger speed. Low light is so important because we put these trail cameras in the woods. And because they're in the woods, they need to be sensitive in low light situations. If the camera has to keep the shutter open longer in order to get a good picture, in order to get enough light in there to expose properly and have a good picture, the end result is you'll have blurry images of deer, even if they're daytime pictures, 
and your nighttime pictures of bucks and their antlers are gonna look a little bit blurry. Sometimes the antlers start to look like they're square on the ends, and then all that is is that the shutter was open a little bit longer as that antler was moving, and it captured the full range of that antler's movement and then processed it as one image, even though it's really just blur. When you're looking at trail cameras, pay attention to the low light performance. Read those descriptions and find out what the specifications are on those trail cameras regarding low light. Price is another big feature for me. I'm in the $100 range, $100 to $120 per trail camera. I'm trying to run five trail cameras here on about 40 acres. That seems to be a good number for me and I'm very happy with that. So I don't wanna spend $500 per trail camera on a Reconyx trail camera that has great image quality necessarily. I'm happy with the $100 to $120 range of image quality as long as I have those other features. One of the features that's pretty popular these days on trail cameras is a time-lapse feature too. Now, anybody who watches Death by Bungie, anybody who is on our Facebook page knows I love time-lapses. I try to incorporate them on the Facebook page. I try to incorporate them into these videos. But you don't necessarily need a time-lapse feature on your trail camera in order to make time-lapses out of the images. What I do, and I'll show you this in a future video, you can make time-lapses in most video editors editing software just using a series of pictures. You don't necessarily need to spend the extra money for the time-lapse feature on your trail camera in order to make those time-lapses. So I hope this helps you a little bit to pick out a good trail camera, get out there and enjoy those pictures and those videos. You don't have to have big bucks on your trail cameras. The trail camera is just to give me some great fun pictures out there. I've had pictures of deer smelling the camera. I've had pictures of butterflies. I've had pictures of uh, porcupines and everything else out there in the woods. And I love seeing those pictures. If you like trail camera pictures like that, then log on to Death by Bungie's Facebook page. Subscribe to this channel for future videos. And until next time, all hail Bungie. Second state is number one in my